Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for R. This screencast covers section 11.7, the Shearer Array Hair Test. This test is a two way non parametric test for data that can be ranked. In this respect, it works on the same principal assumptions as the one way non parametric ANOVA or Kruskal Wallis test. The validity of two-way non-parametric ANOVAs is often a little controversial and most programs do not have a simple command to run such tests. You can often use the programs to implement the equation given in the book, but this requires user manipulation of the dataset. In R, however, it is relatively straightforward to run a generic script that does the data manipulation for us. The data can be found in table 11.14. This is the script we are going to be using, and in this case it is split over two screens. You may wish to freeze the screencast to look at it in more detail, or alternatively, you can download it from the resource centre. The command functions are in black, are all in lowercase, and you must enter them exactly as shown. The lines in green are notes to help your understanding of how the script flows. The words in blue are variable names, and can be changed to suit your data. But you must be consistent in spelling and the use of lower and uppercase letters and the data are in red. There are several ways to load data into R. See my screencast Introduction to R for more details. Looking at the first variable, you can see that we have used the C operator to load the data into R. In the second variable, we have used the rep function, which will create a variable with each category or factor name in quotes repeated the number of times specified by the each attribute before the program appends the next factor name to the variable. Here is the second page of the script. So let's run the script. I'm going to go up and place my cursor and click at the very beginning of the script. I'm now going to run it line by line. If you are using a Linux or Windows computer, you need to press Ctrl R. If you're using a Mac, you need to press Command Option R. Let's now define the variables. The first variable, number of bellies per anise plants, is defined using the C operator. The second variable, location, is defined using the rep function and the each attribute. In this case, it should give us cricket pitch eight times, followed by lawn eight times. We are using the same command for fertilizer added, but in this case we should get no four times, followed by yes four times, and so on. We can confirm that these variables have been set up correctly by entering the name of the variable in the script. When R comes across this, it will display the variable. So this is location, and indeed we can see we have cricket pitch eight times, followed by lawn eight times. And for fertilizer added, the variable is as expected. So let's now do the test. The first thing that we must do is to rank each variable that we had entered and put it in a new variable. So I'm going to rank the number of bellis perennis and put it in the variable rank bellis. Similarly, I'm going to rank the location data and place it in the variable rank location. And I'm going to rank the fertilizer added data and place it into the rank fertilizer added variable. These three variables now allow us to do an AOV test, standing for Analysis of Variance. If we run this test, we do not get an output because I've asked the output to be placed in another variable called AOV.Results. A selection of these results is displayed in the console window by the following summary command. We can see that we have some of the values required to do the test, including sum of squares and degrees of freedom. I could take these out by hand and put them in the equation, but why do that when I can use R to do it for me? So this next section is extracting the values we need from the AOV.Results variable. First, I'm creating a variable called DF for degrees of freedom, which contain all the degrees of freedom information. Next, I'm creating a second variable called SUMDF, because the equation requires us to use the sum of all the degrees of freedom. I am now creating another variable called SS, which contains all the sum of squares data. And because we need to use the sum of the sum of squares data, I'm creating another variable called sum SS. We now have all of the variables we need to calculate the MS and H values. So let's calculate the mean square value. The mean square value is equal to the sum of all the sum of squares divided by the sum of the degrees of freedom. Now we can calculate an H value. The H value for location is the sum of squares found at position 1 in the SS variable divided by MS, the mean square value. The H value for the fertilizer added is calculated by taking the sum of squares value at position 2 in the sum of squares variable and again dividing it by the MS value. And finally, we can calculate an H value for the interaction 
between location and fertilizer. This is calculated by taking the sum of squares value at position 3 in the SS variable and again dividing it by MS. We can now convert these H values into probabilities using the chi-square distribution function to calculate the probabilities. This next line calculates the probability for location and we can see it gives us a value of 0 0.001. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. This value is below 0 0.05 and suggests that there is a significant difference in the daisy density between the two locations, cricket pitch and lawn. The probability value for the fertilizer added is 0 0.08. This is above our 0 0.05 transition probability, suggesting we cannot reject the null hypothesis and that fertiliser has made no difference to the daisy density. Finally, we can look at interaction. The p-value is equal to 0 0.9. This result is strongly arguing that there is no interaction between location and fertiliser. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.